Papset presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> The makers of Fabstead present each week at this time Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve, written by John Whedon. We'll hear from the Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. But first, are uh, some of the foods you usually serve hard to get these days? Well, don't think that means your meals have to be monotonous, because there's a plentiful food that gives appetizing variety to menus in a hundred different ways and is mighty easy to use, too. I'm talking about Pabst Et, the delicious golden cheese food that comes in the familiar round package. It spreads easily to make tasty, nutritious sandwiches. Pabst Et also slices neatly to serve with apple pie or fruit. And it's no trick at all to make smooth cheese sauces with Pabst Et to pour over hot vegetables, hard-cooked eggs, fish, or chicken dishes. Yes, and Pabst Et makes smooth, tempting rarebits, light, fluffy souffles. And it's a sure hit, melted on toast in the broiler. By all in all, you could count at least 100 different ways to turn everyday foods into exciting treats with Pabst Et. Another thing, Pabst Et is easy to digest, too. And wholesome and nourishing. A favorite with the youngsters. So serve Pabst Et often. Ask your grocer for Pabst Et tomorrow. You'll recognize it by its distinctive round, flat package. Remember, it's Pat's Pet, the delicious golden cheese food of a hundred uses. And now, let's join our friend, the great Gildersleeve, who seems to have been overdoing a bit lately. His legal counsel, Judge Hooker, has persuaded him to drop in on Doc Pettibone for a checkup. And while the judge stands by, the good doctor goes over the great man with a stethoscope. You know, doctor, this is a lot of nonsense. I feel fine. Oh, quiet, please, Mr. Gildersleeve. I want to listen to that heart of yours. Yeah, we take you now to Gildersleeve's heart. <laughs> take it away, doc. Yes, Mr. What is it? Why do you look like that? What is it, Doc? What have you found? Don't tell me you found a heart. <laughs> you keep out of this, Hooker. This is serious. I'd like you to listen to this, Judge. Put this stethoscope on. That's right. Now hold the other end up to his chest. <laughs> stand still. It tickles. Well, stand still. There. Now listen. What do you hear? Sort of a rustling noise. Sort of a what? Sounds like a troop of Boy Scouts coming through the underbrush. Oh, no, no, that's the hair on his chest. <laughs> You're in the wrong place. Hold it lower. Hold it still. Hold Gildersleeve still. Oh, cut that out, Hooker. I can't stand this suspense. The Doc, Doc, am I, am I going to die? No, no, now take it easy. Don't spare me, Doc. I'm a sick man, I know it. Don't try to fool me. If my time is up, I want you to tell me. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, Mr. Gildersleeve, but you are not going to die. No? No. <laughs> Did you hear that, Hooker? You're not going to die, but with that blood pressure of yours, if you don't do what I tell you, you're going to blow up. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I'll do it, Doctor. I'll do anything you say. You name it, and I'll do it. Well, I want you to get some rest. Uh, rest, yeah. Fly low. Take it easy. Above all, don't get excited. Don't get excited. Maybe you ought to go away for a few days. That's what I keep telling him. Go away. Go away. <laughs> Listen, you meddlesome old goat. The judge is right. Yeah. Why don't you close up the house and take the kids and go fishing? Say, you know, I haven't been fishing in 20 years. Best thing in the world for the nerves, isn't it, Doc? Nothing like it. Yes, sir. I used to be quite a fly caster in my day. A regular Isaac Walpole. <laughs> well, then the place for you is Lake Heckmatack. You can rent a little cabin up there and... Jump. Are there any fish? Are there any fish? You know that big trout that hangs over the sideboard in my dining room? Yes. Lake Hackmatack. Yes. Say, one of those wouldn't look bad in my den. By George, I'll do it. I'll take Marjorie and Leroy and we'll start the first thing in the morning. Come on, Judge. <laughs> Mm. 
Mr. Gildersleeve, just a minute. Yes? There's one more thing. If What's that, Doc? Five dollars, please. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Five dollars. <laughs> Hey, good evening, Bertie. Evening, Miss Gilsey. My, something smells mighty good. It smells all right, but it ain't good. Leroy, what's going on here? What on earth are you doing with all those bottles? Just making a little root beer. It, a little root beer? He's made 14 gallons. Well, that's how much it makes. You can see for yourself, Unc. It says here on the bottle, this extract is sufficient to make 14 gallons of genuine root beer. Don't you think you're getting into this thing a little deep, Leroy? 14 gallons. That's an awful lot of burps. Yeah, and he's used up... <laughs> he's used up every bottle and cork I got, and the wash tub still half full. It washed up? Oh, you don't understand, Uncle Mort. I'm not going to drink it. I'm going to sell it. Leroy, did you ever hear of the Pure Food and Drug Act? No. Well, you will. <laughs> and you're going to hear the riot act if you don't get that stuff out of Bertie's kitchen. Ed, where's Marjorie, Bertie? She's out back, Mr. Gilsleeve. She's been laying in a hammer crying her eyes out. Crying? Say, we'll have to see about this. Yeah, nothing but trouble in this house. The doctor's right. I've got to get out of here. You too, Leroy. Come on. You ought to know better than to muss up. The... Why, Marjorie? What's the matter, honey? Nothing. It's Doug. He was supposed to take him to the movies tonight, and he's standing her up. He is not. I'm standing him up. Huh? <laughs> Wait a minute. Let me get this thing straight. He stood me up last night, so... So I'm standing him up tonight. Well, darling, if you're standing him up, what are you crying about? <laughs> it's Doug who should feel badly. I know. But he doesn't. <laughs> He's going to take that Helen Gibson out. Well, you told him to take her out. I heard you. Yes, but he's going to do it. <laughs> oh, that's women for you. Take my advice. I'll never have anything to do with it. Yes, all right. Lee. Take it from me. The more you do for them, the less they appreciate it. I know, I know. Clean them off and tell them nothing. That's my method. Take my advice. Leroy, why don't you start a column? <laughs> you tend to your root beer and lay off your sister. Now, Marjorie, I wouldn't waste any tears on a fellow like Doug. He's nothing don't but... Don't you dare say anything against Doug. <laughs> Stick around, Leroy. I may need you after all. Remember, Marjorie... There's better fish than duck. Hey, right in Lake Hackmatack. Say, how'd you like to go to Hackmatack for a couple of weeks, huh? We'll rent a little camp, and we'll do nothing but lie around in the sun all day and fish. What do you say? Fish! Yippee! If I wasn't asking you, Leroy, it Marjorie? Well, if there's going to be any fishing, there's one thing I'd like to know first. Oh, what's that? Who cleans the fish? Uh, yes, there is that. <laughs> Leroy, you're getting to be a big boy now. What's the matter with you cleaning the fish, Unc? Uh, well, I'll tell you. Funny thing about me and fish. I'm not a squeamish man, but if there's one thing I can't stand, it's cleaning fish. Of course, we haven't caught any fish yet. Uh, wait a minute, I've got it. Uh, Bertie! Oh, Bertie! Yes, Mr. Gilfrey. Bertie, how would you like to go away with us tomorrow for a nice vacation? <laughs> Let's get going. It's 10.30, and we were going to start at 8 o'clock. Come on, come on, come on. We're coming, Uncle Mort. Well, then what's holding us up? We're just packing the lunch. For goodness sake, we just finished breakfast. Now, you'd be the first to holler, Mr. Gilfleeve, if there wasn't any lunch. We'll be done as soon as we finish these deviled eggs. Yeah, I don't know why it is every time we go anyplace, all the women in the house have to start deviling eggs. <laughs> have you got the thermos bottle? Yes. Have you got the steamer rug? Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, Uncle Mort, why don't you just leave the packing to us? We can do it much quicker if you'll just let us alone. Well, we're just trying to help, for heaven's sake. Of course, if I'm not wanted here, far be it from me. Why don't me. you go get the car out? A yeah, man tries to offer his services around here, and he gets his head taken off. Come on, Leroy. Hey, Uncle, can I back the car out? No, you may not. Why not, Uncle Moore? Piggy Banks backs his car out. I can do it on it. You heard me. I said no. Well, why not? I've told you before, young man, you're too young. You're much too young to understand about cars. Oh. Yeah, now, get off the running board. I'm going to start it up. Yeah. Have you been fooling with this car, young man? No, sir. But may I 
make a suggestion? No, you may not. What is it? <laughs> Why don't you turn on the ignition? Turn on the... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's a funny thing. I've been trying to start it that way for years. It's never worked yet. <laughs> Yangway! Look out! Hey there, young fellow. Watch out where you're going. Well, who the... What are you trying to do, Throckmorton? Run over me? No, Judge, but it's a nice idea. <laughs> That's gratitude. An old friend comes over to say goodbye to you, and you try to run him down. Here's a lunch basket, Miss Gill, please. Uh, oh, Leroy, uh, while you're resting, uh, go get that, will you? I'll open the trunk. Uh, one side, please, Judge. Leroy, what's all this in here? That's my root beer. Well, get it out of there. Oh, long. Oh. We've got to have room for the baggage. We can't take all this. Well, gee, can't I take some of it? You can take six bottles. That's all we'll have room for. That's all you'll have room for, too. Okay. <laughs> the idea. I've never seen it. Good morning, Judge Hooker. Good morning, Marjorie. Well, it looks as if you had a fine day for a trip. Looks like a scorcher, if you ask me. I'm dying already. Yeah, it is a little hot. It's a lucky thing it's not far to hack with hack. I don't like the looks of that left rear tire there. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that. It's still got a lot of fabric left. It's still got a lot of fabric left. Leroy, come get these bags, will you? Uh, yes, Leroy, while you're resting. Seems like I have to do all the work around here. <laughs> By the way, Throckmorton, I'll be glad to sort of keep an eye on the house for you while you're away. Oh, the house is locked, Judge. I don't think there's anything to keep an eye on, really. Well, you can't tell. A couple of houses have been broken into around here lately, you know. Is that so? I hadn't heard about that. Yes, so if you'd like to leave your key with me, I'll be glad to drop around once in a while and see that everything's all right. Well, that's mighty nice of you, Judge. Mighty nice of you. Here. There's the front door key. Thank you. Uh, Leroy, have you got those bags in back there? Yes, everything's in. Uh, Bertie, uh, suppose you and Leroy are right in the back. Marjorie, you sit up here in front with me, huh? Now, uh, are we all set? Everything in? Have we forgotten anything? Let's see. Doors locked, lights out, bags in. Uh, Leroy, did you... Yes, Uncle. Good, well, we're off. <laughs> Goodbye, Judge. Bye, Rocky. Hope you like Hexmatech. If we don't, you'll hear from us. Bye, Marjorie. Leroy. Goodbye, Judge. Goodbye. 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 Ah, good old hooker. You know, this whole trip was really his idea, Marjorie. He's a sweet old thing, really. Yeah, he's a sweet old thing. I'm going to miss the sweet old goat. <laughs> well, ought to be a nice trip. Hey, Unc, what was that? Sounded like a blowout. I knew it. It's that left rear tire. Hey, there goes another. Oh, there goes our trip. Can you beat it? You work hard all year. You save your money. You mind your business. You try to take a well-earned vacation. Oh, no. <laughs> That's four of them. Oh, the spare. How do you like that? You get out, Leroy. I'm afraid to look. <laughs> I've seen some bad breaks in my time, but I'll be a... Mark? I mean, I'm, I'm a patient man, but good gracious to Betsy. <laughs> well, that's life, I guess. Bertie, did you ever change a tire? <laughs> hey, Al, what do you think? Don't tell me. Let me guess. The tires were okay, all of them. Leroy, this is no time for joking. I'm not joking. They're okay. Leroy, I distinctly heard something blow. So did I. I'll tell you what blew. It was Leroy's root beer. That what blew. <laughs> I told him he put too much yeast in that stuff. Root beer. Oh, this is going to be one of my bad days. <laughs> The great Gildersleeve will be with us again in a few seconds. Everybody knows that fresh vegetables are good for you. But do you know the trick that makes practically any vegetable dish a real taste treat? Well, the answer is, serve hot vegetables with smooth cheese sauce poured over them. You'll make them even better tasting, even more nutritious, too. It's easy if you use Pat's Pet, the delicious golden cheese food that comes in a handy round flat package. All you do is melt Pat's Pet. In a double boiler, stir in a little milk and season, 
presto, you have a grand, smooth cheese sauce, not only for vegetables, but for fish and chicken dishes, macaroni, rarebits, any number of foods. You'd be surprised how a luscious golden cheese sauce, the kind Pabst Et makes so easily, adds sparkle to everyday dishes, gives them appetizing variety that just calls for second helping. Yes, and Pabst that spreads so smoothly, slices so neatly, you'll find a hundred delightful ways to serve Pabst that, both by itself and to add cheese goodness to other foods. It pays to serve Pabst that often because it's so nourishing, a fine energy food, rich in milk protein, and it gives you vitamins A as well as the milk minerals calcium and phosphorus. So ask your grocer for Pabst Et tomorrow. Remember, Pabst Et, the delicious golden cheese food of a hundred uses. And now, let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. It seems that left rear tire held out. Whereas the morning mist roll across Lake Hackmatack, we find the mighty angler seated in the stern of a little rowboat with his niece in the bow and his nephew at the oars. Steady, Leroy. Steady as she goes. Leroy! That went right in my lap. I can't help it. It's these darn oars. Yeah. This is about far enough, I think, Leroy. Yeah, let her coast. That's it. Now hand me that rod. Rod, Marge. Oh, here, Uncle, you want a worm? Forget the worms. A true sportsman, Leroy, would rather die than use a worm. Well, then how do you catch the fish? Ah, uh, you'll see. Uh, young man, you're about to be initiated into the gentle art of fly casting. You see that little doohickey there that covers the hook? You mean that tassel? It, it's not a tassel, young man. That's the fly. You see, it's very delicate. The finest ones are so delicate, they're made of hummingbird feathers. Do the fairies make them, Uncle Mort? Oh, shut up. <laughs> There's a lot of angles with this young man, so watch carefully and don't be so smart. I'm watching. Yeah. Now, this is how your true angler tempts the finny tribe. It's all done with the wrist, see? And the secret is in getting the rhythm. One, you cast it. Two, you jerk it back. You see? One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two, one. One, two, one, two, one, two. It's all done with the wrist, you see? One. You've been saying that for three days now, Unc. When do you catch the fish? The fish are secondary, young man. The sport is the thing. One. Two, one, two, one, two, one, one, two, two, one, two, one, two, one. Hey, uh, no kidding. How long does this go on? Yes, really, Uncle Mort. All right, Leroy. Pass me the worms. <laughs> Tell me something, Uncle Mort. What makes you think there are any fish in this lake? I've seen them. Where? In Judge Hooker's dining room. <laughs> now, what are we doing here? Judge Hooker has a stuffed trout over his sideboard that long. And by George, I'm not leaving here till I catch something. Can you beat it? Five days, not a single bite. Not even from a mosquito. Not one. Remember, Uncle Mort, the sport is the thing. The fish are secondary. Yeah. Give me those worms. I've tried dry flies, wet flies. I've tried casting, trolling. If this doesn't work, so help me. I'll go in after him with a club. <laughs> hey, Uncle, look, look down there. What? Where? Down in the weeds there. Huh? See him? Ooh, yeah, and a fat one, too. <laughs> Be quiet, everybody. Be very quiet now. <gasps> Shh. If I can just lower the hook down there without scaring him. Easy. You don't move. What's that, a mosquito? It's an airplane. Well, keep it quiet. <laughs> Remember now, fish are jittery. Easy now. Nice fishy. Come and bite the little worm. That plane's coming this way, Hunk. Go away, plane. He's diving. It's a power dive. Look at that crazy clown. Oh, the crazy fool. Look out, everybody. Duck. Oh, it's Doug. He's waving. Hi, Doug. Hi. Sit down, 
Marjorie! Hi, Dad! Oh! <laughs> Leroy! Where's Leroy? None of your jokes now, young man. You come out of there. I'm okay, Uncle. This is no time to guard. <laughs> Everybody all right? That's right, Marjorie. You grab hold of the boat. Oh! <laughs> yes. Leroy, you grab hold of me. Oh, yeah. I'll grab. Hey, look what I grabbed. The fish. I got the little son of a gun. I got him barehanded. <laughs> oh, he's slippery. Uh, put him down in front of your sweater, Uncle. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Be sure and take good care of that fish back there. Oh, don't you worry about that fish. He can take care of himself. That's the powerfulest fish I ever smelled. Well, <laughs> uh, some fish are gamier than others. <laughs> sort of have to expect that of a trout. That ain't no trout, Mr. Gill, please. Uh, what do you mean? That trout's a flounder. Uh, don't you talk that way about my trout. Well, whatever it is, it's getting higher than a goat. Why, Marjorie, I don't smell anything. Oh, of course you don't with those cigars. <laughs> If you don't stop smoking those things, this fish is going to be kippered before you get them home. <laughs> so are we. Uh, no fooling, Mr. Gilsley. Don't you think we ought to stop somewhere and give him a decent burial? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing doing. That fish is all I got to show for a misspent week. If he bothers you, you can hang him out the window or something. Hey, that's an idea. Hang him on the fishing rod and stick him out back. Here, I'll do it. Now, don't let him get away. What are you expecting to do? Found his way back to Lake Hackmatack? Yeah. yeah, that'll air him out a little. Yeah. Well, what's that guy honking about? All right, brother, come on, if you're going to pass. Well, come on. Hey! What do you want? You got a fish. <laughs> I know you got a fish, you big dodo. I think the man had never seen a fish before. Mr. Gilsley. Uh, what is it, Bertie? I ain't sure, Mr. Gilsley, but it looks like there's some seagulls following us. Is... <laughs> oh, fine. Yep, that's what this. is. They're after your fish, Uncle. They're after Junior. Yep. Step on it, Mr. Gilsley. Yeah, pull in your line, Leroy. Pull in your line. Play him, boy. Play him. I have more trouble with birds. Oh! Go away, birds. Go away. <laughs> this stuff out of here before it gets any darker. Don't forget that fish. As if we could. Yes. I got the lunch basket. Who's going to carry in all these bags? Thanks. Uh, Leroy, while you're resting, old man. Yeah. Watch your step, Marjorie. It's pretty dark. You? Oh, the Lord. Are you all right? Something's gravity. Leroy, what did I tell you about those croquet wickets? I thought I'd put them away. I'm gonna. Yeah. Look out for that mole trap there, folks. Gosh, feel that grass. I bet it's grown eight inches since we've been away. Leroy, first thing tomorrow morning. I know, while I'm resting. Yeah. <laughs> hey, somebody left a light on upstairs. Where? In my bathroom. Bertie, has that been burning all the time we've been away? It wasn't me, Miss Gilsey. Well, who was it then? I don't know, Miss Gilsey, but it's in your bathroom. Yes, yeah, well, that's right. Well, come on, bring the bags, folks. <laughs> Boy, it's stuffy in this house. Hey, don't forget to put that fish in the icebox, Bertie. The icebox isn't built that could hold that fish. Uh, Miss Gilsey, Miss Gilsey, somebody's been in the kitchen. Yeah, what do you mean? Tramps or gypsies or somebody. How do you know, Brady? There's dirty dishes all over the place. Miss Gilsey, you don't think maybe it's been a b b b burglars? Yes, it's the b burglars. Well, uh, we have to see about this, Bertie. Uh, Miss Marjorie, you and me better go count that silver. Shh. Listen. Huh? What is it? 
It's your shower, Uncle Mort. Shower? You didn't go off and leave it running. Certainly not. I always turn that little... What? <gasps> There's somebody in it. There's somebody up there right now. How do you like that for nerve? <laughs> Takes a shower before he robs the joint. <laughs> Quick, I'll call the police. It's no use, Leroy. The wires are cut. How do you know? They always are. It's the first thing robbers do. Oh, but you can't wait for the police, Uncle Mort. You've got to go up there and get him. You're right, Marjorie. Uh, who, me? <laughs> I'll guard the back stairs, Mr. Kilsey, and if he comes down that way, I'll part his scalp with this meat chopper. Yes, yeah. yeah, sure. you do that, Bertie, but uh, do it quietly. And you go up the front stairs. Yes, yeah. wait a minute. Maybe we better think this over a little first. A lot of angles to this. Leroy, you stand by. Okay, Uncle, I've got my baseball back. Marjorie, you sneak out and run for the cops. Well, here I go, if nobody stops me. Be careful, Uncle Moore. Yeah, yeah. How? It quit pushing, Leroy. I wish it wasn't so dark. I don't dare turn on a light. I'm a little vulnerable in the light. Well, here I go. To oh, those squeaky stairs. It's probably these six dollar shoes. I mustn't get excited. The doctor said I mustn't get excited. I'll bet he'd get excited, though. Well, now that I'm here, I want... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I can see him moving around behind the shower curtain. What do I do now? Remember what the coach used to say, Gildy? Get him below the knees, boy. I wish I'd never broken training. Come on, Gildersleeve, give him what you gave Hardwick. 29, 33, 76, hit him! Police! Police! Gildersleeve. Hooker, what are you doing here? Well, what does it look like I'm doing? I'm taking a shower. Any objections? Yes, what are you doing in my house? Well, the painters were working on mine, so I thought I'd just move over here for a few days. I didn't think you'd mind. Matter of fact, I didn't expect you back so soon. I'll bet you didn't. Hooker, you knew you were going to move in here the minute you got me out of town. That's why you suggested that trip. Why, Throckmorton, I'm hurt that you'd say a thing like that. Come clean, Hooker. You just had a bath. You knew it all the time. Well, I... <laughs> had to have the house painted. You know that. It was a disgrace. Yeah. I can't stand the smell of paint gives me colic. You wouldn't want me to go... No, out. I wouldn't want you to have colic. Anything I have is yours, Judge. You know that. Move in any time. Make yourself at home. Wreck the joint. There's one little thing, Judgey, about Lake Hackmatack. Lovely spot. Yes, lovely. But there's no trout there, and you know it. Now, there you're wrong, Throckmorton. You just didn't try the right place. Don't tell me. I combed that lake from one end to the other. Well, no wonder. You should have tried the place where I got mine. Where was that? At the Hackmatack Souvenir Shop. Let bygones be bygones, huh? Let's be friends. You mean that, Throckmorton? You mean you forgive me? Certainly, I mean it. There's my hand on it. Gildy, my friend, I take back everything I've ever said about you. Uh, seems to me this calls for a little drink, huh, Judge? Bertie, uh, bring the judge a bottle of that special root beer. You may think you've tasted root beer, Judge, but you're going to get an awful bang out of this. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Original music heard in this program was composed and conducted by Billy Mills. This is Dan Alexander speaking for the makers of Tap Steps and inviting you to tune in again next week at the same time for the further adventures of the great Gildersleeve.
Abstead presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> yeah. The makers of Pabstep present each week at this time Harold Perry as The Great Gildersleeve, written by John Wheaton. We'll hear from The Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. But first, do you housewives find it difficult sometimes to get meals in a hurry these busy days? Yes, and make them as tempting and nutritious as your hard-working family deserves? Well, that problem is much simpler if you have a package or two of Papstet on hand. Because Papstet is the delicious golden cheese food of a hundred different uses. Papstet spreads easily to make tasty, appetite-satisfying sandwiches. It slices neatly to serve with apple pie or fruit. It's easy to make smooth cheese sauces with Papstet to pour over hot vegetables and other foods. Yes, and there are any number of main dinner dishes you can make in a jiffy. Why, in no time at all, you'll discover a hundred or more ways to give tempting variety to everyday meals with Papstead. So keep Papstead on hand. Remember, it's easy to digest. A fine energy food that's wholesome and nourishing. Yes, ask your grocer tomorrow for Papstead in the distinctive round, flat package. Remember, it's Papstead. B-A-B-S-T hyphen E-T-T. The delicious golden cheese food of a hundred uses. And now let's join our friend, the great Gildersleeve, who's brushing up on his golf game in preparation for the finals of the annual Labor Day tournament at the Summerfield Country Club. On the eve of the great event, we find him in his living room behind the sofa, addressing the ball with a mashie. This is a very difficult shot. Excuse me. Quiet, Bertie. Never talk to anybody when they're making a golf shot. Yes, excuse me. Yeah, now watch this. If you ever get in a trap, Bertie, there's just one thing to remember. Oh, I keep out of traps. Yes. The thing is, you want to get under the ball and give it plenty of backspin. Now watch this. This is what we call a chip shot. You. Chip shot, huh? What do we do with the chips? <laughs> Oh, my goodness. What's Miss Marjorie going to say when she sees what's happened to her face? Well, those things shouldn't be left lying around on mantles. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I know something that'll look a lot better up there anyway. What's that? A nice big silver cup with my name on it. Oh, yes, yeah, so that would go good. Oh, by the way, Mr. Gilsey, Miss Marjorie said to tell you we're putting you in the sewing room tonight. It's the sewing room? Why? What have I done? She said she's going to put Mr. Ferris in your room. Who's Mr. Ferris? I don't know, but he's a gentleman who's going to sleep in your room. Where am I expected to sleep? On the floor? Oh, no. You're going to have Leroy's camp car. The one that folds up. It folds up. (laughs) Suppose you get the broom and uh, sweep up these uh, divots, Bertie. How soon is dinner? I'm starving. Oh, any time now, Mr. Gilsey. We're just waiting for Mr. Farris. Yeah, Mr. Farris again. Well, I'm hungry enough to eat a horse. What are we having, Bertie? Oh, we're having calf's liver. Have we come to that? And mashed potatoes. And fried eggplant. Fried eggplant. Yes. Sir. You know I can't stand eggplant, Bertie. It, it makes me break out. Yes, I know it, but Miss Marjorie said Mr. Ferris just dotes on eggplant. Well, I don't dote on Mr. Ferris. You can tell him that, whoever he is. Yes, sir, I'll do that. Excuse me now, Miss Gilsley. I got to see what's cooking. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't let anything happen to that eggplant. Eggplant, sewing room. I don't know why we have a sewing room anyway. There hasn't been any sewing done in this house for 20 years. Uh, that you, Marjorie? Good evening, Uncle Moore. Listen, what's this thing all about? Say, you're really done up tonight, aren't you? <laughs> you like it? Yeah? I got it for the dance. It only costs $10 more than my allowance, especially reduced. Yes. Yeah. You haven't told me whether you like it. Well, you haven't given me a chance. <laughs> Turn around, my dear. <laughs> well? Marjorie, come kiss your dear old uncle. <sighs> Mm. You do like it, then. Honey, you look like a million dollars, specially reduced. (laughs) (laughs) I'm glad. There's only one thing. 
Uh, you don't think that dress is a little, uh... uh oh, uh, don't be old-fashioned, Uncle Mort. Uh, I'll bet probably every girl at the dance will be wearing a dress like this. Mm, maybe I'll change my mind and go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please do. It's going to be such fun. No, no, my dear. I've got to get my sleep. i got to be in the pink tomorrow. Oh, come on. No, you and Doug go ahead and have a good time. Oh, I'm not going to the dance with Doug. If you're not? No. Why not? Well, Doug and I have just had an understanding, that's all. You uh, mean you're not speaking? No, it's all perfectly friendly. Oh, brother, that's worse. <laughs> well, Ed, who is taking you to the dance? I'm going with Leroy. Leroy? You didn't buy that dress with all those to go to the dance with Leroy. And another thing, since when does Leroy go to dances at night? I don't ever... Leroy? Oh, hello, Uncle. Come back here, young man. Yes, Uncle Mort. Where did you get that necktie? Uh, upstairs. No, I thought so. Suppose you take it right back upstairs. Yes, sir. Oh, by the way, can I go to the dance tonight? If, what do you mean, by the way? I mean, can I? Why do you ask me? You seem to be going. Oh, gee, thanks, Uncle. I'll sweep out the whole garage tomorrow. Well, see that you get back here by 10.30. Oh, okay. I'll sweep out the tool shed. <laughs> oh, say, I forgot to ask you how you came out in the tournament today, Uncle Moore. Oh, the tournament? Oh, I'm doing pretty well. I... I played Judge Hooker in the finals tomorrow. Judge Hooker? Yeah. Well, the judge must have improved his game. No, uh, he's improved his handicap. I think they added in his age or a social security number or something. <laughs> oh, you can beat him. Uh, Why don't you come to the dance? After all, he's coming. I don't trust that old goat. He's just the type who would sneak home early and go to sleep. Besides, we got a good bet on this game. Two dollars. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going to miss the best dance the club's ever had. That's right, Unc. And you know all the trouble we had over the band. Well, guess who we finally got? I don't know. Who? They got Bill Farris. No. Yes. Who's Bill Farris? Margie, tell them who Bill Farris is. He's a band leader. He plays the trumpet. It's... Just probably the greatest trumpet player in the world, that's all. Next to Maury Haynes. I never heard of him either. Oh, you have too, Uncle Mort. You know that record, I Don't Want to Walk Without You, Baby? My auto, you played it night and day for three months. <laughs> well, that's Maury Haynes on the trumpet. Bill Farris plays a lot like him. Keep him away from here, then. Oh, don't be a Nicky, Uncle Moore. A Nicky. As a matter of fact, he happens to be coming here to dinner tonight. We're putting him up for the weekend. Oh, he's the one who's sleeping in my little bed, huh? Oh, we couldn't ask a guest to sleep on a cot. He's the gent who's ordering the meals around here now, huh? Bill Farris. I put up with a lot of things, my dear. But this is the first time I've ever had to play second fiddle to a cornet player. <laughs> Well, I'm curling up at the edges, too, Bertie. We've waited long enough for this star border of ours. Let's eat. Oh, I guess we'll have to. I told him 7 o'clock. There he is. That's him. I'll go, Bertie. Leroy, I'll go. Leroy. Oh, do let me go. Never mind looking in the mirror, Mark. The guy's waiting. Shh. Hi, Leroy. Sure, hello. Well, hello. She hadn't seen him since 4 o'clock this afternoon. <laughs> Don't care if I do. Well, I do. Sorry I'm late. I had to stop off to close the deal. Say, this isn't a bad little dump you got here. Yeah, thanks. Who's your fat friend? <laughs> Mort, Mort, uh, this is Mr. Farrell. Just call me Bill. And this is my uncle, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hiya, Jack. Just call me Mister. He's a character, isn't he? Hey, hey, Mort. Oh, yes, and this is my little brother. Hiya, Slat. Uh, hi, Mr. Farris. You know something? What? I think you've got a swell band. I listen to you every time you're on the radio. Well, that hardly comes under the heading of news, bud. They all listen to me. You listen to any of the bands today, Eddie Francis, Goonie Myers, Maury Haynes, they all steal from me. Oh, yeah. but I love Maury Haynes, don't you? Maury Haynes, don't make me sick. What's that guy got? No talent? Nothing. Yeah. Well, I can blow more trumpet with my left ear than he can blow with his mouth. Maury Haynes. Well, I could have been right up where Maury Haynes is today, clean enough. Then why aren't you? I'll tell you why, just to give you an idea of what you're up against in this business. Maury Haynes and I auditioned for the same radio program a while back. There's no question which is the better band, but it so happens that the sponsor's got a crotch on I Don't Want to Walk Without Your Baby. Well, I don't happen to have it in the books, Maury has. Oh, I love it, though. Well, I see i got to educate you, sugar. I wouldn't be caught playing that tune in a dog fight. Uh, what's the matter with it? It's a lot of corn. That guy, Haynes. If it wasn't for that broken-down ballad, where would he be today? Well, I... I rather like it. Well, for more joy. Oh, I don't want to. I think it's got something. <laughs> well, don't sing it around me, brother. I can't take it. Yeah. Excuse me, Miss Marjorie. Dinner's ready and then some. Oh, 
Yeah, do you mind if we sit right down, Mr. Ferris? I'm afraid we'll be late for the day. Oh, I couldn't eat anything. Matter of fact, I got a little hungry, so I grabbed a bite on the way over. Oh, well, you don't mind if we grab a bite. After, <laughs> after waiting for you for an hour. Oh, go ahead, Jack. Eat your head off. Don't mind me. Uh, murder. <laughs> well, come on, gorgeous. You don't want to eat now. I got the car waiting outside. If you get hungry, we'll stop at a bean wagon. Oh, that would be fun. If Uncle Mort doesn't mind. No, he doesn't mind. <laughs> Coming, Leroy? Okay. Hey, will you give me a lesson on the puppet, Mr. Farris? I can blow a bugle. Well, some other time. Hey, don't stay up too late, Pop. Hey, Pop? Jump this bag in my room when you go upstairs, will you? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hooker, watch this drive now. Head down, wrist lock, left arm stiff, come back slow and... <laughs> 1,700 yards right to the pin. <laughs> now we come to the water hole. Watch me drive this one across the sleepy lagoon. Even the sleepy lagoon. Where's all that racket? Did, what's going on out here? Oh, they must be back from the dance. This is a fine time for Sleepy Lagoon. I'll go down there and put that goon to sleep. Oh! He'll never get me in a folding cot again. <laughs> Where's that light switch? Oh, my poor little pinkies. Where's that door? It was here last night. Oh, oh, I'm in the sewing room, yeah. Oh, here it is. Quiet down there, quiet. All right, if I gotta go out there. Twice. Okay, son, blow your brains out. Uh, remember, take the second valve on that highway. <laughs> Leroy! <laughs> well, if it isn't fat, so. Uh, where'd you get the night shirt? Yeah. Leroy, you skin right upstairs as fast as your little legs can carry you. I told you to be in bed by 10.30. Is it that way, Dunk? It's 2.30 and you know it. Look at your eyes. They're popping out. Now, get up there. Yes, yeah. sir. I'm sorry, Uncle Mort, if we disturbed you. My window is right over the porch here. Okay, I won't play anymore. Go climb into your snuggle bunny. <laughs> snuggle bunny. <laughs> Why don't you take that sour cornet and turn it in for scrap? It's fellas like you are holding up the war effort. <laughs> you better come up pretty soon, my dear. Right away, Uncle Mort. As soon as I turn out the light. Oh, what's your hurry? You can sleep any time. Now, let's park on the swing here and take a gander at the moon. Well, just for a minute. It's awfully late. Oh, move over. Let's get acquainted. Well, I, uh, I really must go. Oh, nonsense. I don't come to town every day, you know. Say, I hope you're not one of those old-fashioned types. Well, no. Well, then move over. <laughs> yeah, that's better. <laughs> Take a look at that moon. You know, that moon was just made for you and me. You know, I really must... No, don't say anything. Don't spoil it. <laughs> nice out here, isn't it? Uh-huh. Marjorie! <laughs> the great Gildersleeve will be with us again in a few seconds. You know, with so many foods becoming scarce these days, we're lucky there's an abundance of cheese. Cheese is so tasty, satisfying, so nourishing, too. And it's mighty easy to add luscious cheese goodness to all kinds of dishes when you use Papstep, the delicious golden cheese food in the handy round flat package. You see, Papstep is just right for cooked cheese dishes because it melts so smoothly without stringing. Why, making a grand-tasting smooth cheese sauce with Papstep is easy as one, two, three. All you do is melt Papstep in a double boiler, stir in a little milk, and season. Mmm, there's a real cheese sauce for hot vegetables, fish and chicken dishes, macaroni, any number of foods. Of course, you'll want to serve Papstep, too, in sandwiches, salads, with fruit and pie. 
Altogether, there are over 100 delicious ways Papstet can glamorize your meals. That's a good thing because Papstet is so nutritious. It's an excellent energy food, rich in milk protein, and it gives you vitamin A and the important milk minerals, calcium and phosphorus. So you see, for many reasons, it's a good thing to have Papstet on hand. Stock up on Papstet tomorrow. Remember, Papstet, the delicious golden cheese food of a hundred uses. And now, let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. After a hard night in the sewing room, he comes down to breakfast with murder in his heart and circles under his eyes. Oh, what a night. I think I'll just have a poached egg this morning, Bertie. Yes, sir. Uncle Mort, I'm, I'm sorry about last night. Really, I am. I tried to... Yeah, think nothing of it, my dear. Think nothing of it. What's a mere golf trophy trophy compared to one night of giddy pleasure? Oh, Uncle Mort. Oh, well, I guess I'll just give up the game. It would have been nice to win a cup, though. Just once before I die. Oh, Uncle Moore, don't talk like that. You're going to win. Anybody at home? Oh, it's Judge Hooker. Come in, Judge. He always comes for breakfast. What does he want? I suppose he came over here to gloat. Oh, goat yourself. Morning, Marjorie. Why, Judge, what's the matter with your leg? Attack of gout. I've got it bad. Did you say gout? What'd you think I said? Can't you see it's killing me? Oh, Judgey, that's a shame. Here's something I ate. It kept me awake the whole night. <laughs> well, that's too bad. Hey, Bertie, cancel that egg. I think I'll have some hot cakes and sausages. Yes, sir. What'd you say, do it, egg? Yeah, cancel it. Oh, shucks, I went and poached it. <laughs> Never mind, bring it on. I'll eat it anyway. Uh, care to join me in an egg, Judge? No, thanks. Oh, uh, it's too bad about your foot, Judge. That'll kind of spoil your game, won't it? Yes, I'm afraid we'll have to postpone the match, Throckmorton. What do you mean, postpone it? You either play it or forfeit it. Now, Gildy, you wouldn't want to win that cup by default. Well, it's tough luck, Judge. You but... wouldn't want people saying you took advantage of a fellow when he ate a lobster. You should have thought of that before you ate the lobster. Oh, have a heart, Gildy. You know I can't walk around that course. Hi, Jackson. How's the kid? I'll just sleep. You've got the nerve to ask me that. Hi, Judge. What's the argument? Well, maybe you can settle it for us. Know anything about golf? Oh, oh, do I know anything about golf? Don't make me laugh. Well, I've got the gout. I can't play today, and Gildersleeve here claims I have to forfeit the match. Well, that's easy. I'll play it for you. If you? Oh, no, you won't. Why not, Gildy? It's better than a default. Oh, he's afraid, that's all. Well, I am not afraid. I'll play this fellow if that's the way you want it. All right, Fatso, let's get going. Yes, sir. <laughs> Mr. Ferris, this is our first tee. We're rather proud of this hole. Yes, it's 485 yards with a trap to the right of the green. <laughs> Better watch out for those woods at the left, too. Never mind the diagrams, Pop. Just show me the flag. Uh, Pop. Where's that driver? Well, keep your eyes peeled now. This one's going a long way. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Gee, that was a beaut, Bill. It must be 300 yards. 310. That's the longest drive in the history of this hole. It was just a lucky fluke, I hope. All right, Pop, I gave you something to shoot at there. Whip out the old pile driver and see if you can knock the ball off the tee. Don't worry about me, Ferris. I'll show you a drive. Hand me that club, Leroy. Here, Aaron. And, and give me a ball. Here. You better give me the good ball. Oh. <laughs> there. Now stand back, son. I've got a lot of things to remember here. Uh, head down, wrist locked, left arm stiff, and come back slow. <laughs> you uh, forgot one thing, Pop. You forgot to hit the ball. <laughs> Leroy, remember you're tattying for me. You laugh at my jokes. Watch this now. <laughs> That's all I wanted to know. I'll see you boys in the clubhouse after the first nine. Your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. Latest results after eight holes of the final round match between Drop Morton P. Gildersleeve and Bill Ferris, who is substituting for Judge Hooker. Gildersleeve is two down. Well, may the best man win. <laughs> Am 
Am I away? Go ahead and pot. What are you getting down in East Frog? You gonna pray? No, my boy. This is the ninth hole. I'm taking no chances. I'm going to sight this putt very carefully. Come on, come on. All right, all right. One side, Leroy. Uh, take that pin out. Uh, quiet now. Uh, sighted putt sank same. Uh, <laughs> well, looks like I'm going to win this hole, Ferris. Not if I sink this 25-footer. It'll be a tie. Brother, if you sink that putt, I'll buy you a lunch. It's a deal. Hold your breath. Oops. Come on, Fatso. Let's go to lunch. <laughs> Another piece of pie? No, not for me, Pops. Light lunch is best when you got another nine to play. Uh, light lunch, three pieces of pie. Well, maybe I guess you're right. Mr. Gildersleeve, can I show you some French pastry? Uh, no, thanks, Garçon. Light lunch today. Uh, you got it right there with you, though, haven't you? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, that little chocolate house looks pretty good. <laughs> What's inside of that? Just a light filling, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, fine. You can give me the chocolate house. Uh, yes, sir. Which one? You might as well give me both of them. <laughs> Oh, hello, Judge. What do you want? I just wanted to make sure you're eating your head off as usual. Well, Mr. Ferris, do you think you can beat him worse this afternoon than you did this morning? Oh, sure. I didn't have the feel of my clubs this morning. Hear that, Gildy? I ought to shoot better than 37 on a dinky little nine-hole course like this. Yep. No, just a minute, Ferris. You can't come to Summerfield and knock our golf course. You're right, Gildy. Oh, well, take it easy, fellas. It's a cute little course. If you like croquet. Um, croquet, nothing. I'll have you know that Walter Hagen played this course, and he said it was wonderful. The Hag said that? Yes. He said, I've never played on anything like it in my life. <laughs> Those were his exact words. They sounded better even when he said them. Well, I still say if this is a good course, I'm Bobby Jones. Well, you listen to me, Jones. Oh, uh, Ferris. I'm just sore enough to make you eat those words. I'm two down to you on the first nine, right? I'll bet you $50 that I win this match. Did I say that? Fifty dollars? Hey, Uncle, you off your stick? Yeah, I must be. No, by golly, I said fifty dollars and I'm going to stick to it. What about it, Paris? It's a bet, Pop. I never hope to make fifty bucks any easier. Come on. It, uh, wait till I eat this last roof. Hey, Uncle Mort, here comes Marge. Maybe she'll bring you luck. Uh, quiet, Leroy. Paris is about to drive. How's it going, Leroy? Uncle Mort just bent his shirt, and it's already hanging out. <laughs> Never mind that shirt. Give me that driver. All right. Head down now. Left arm stiff. Oh, nuts to that. Slam it. <laughs> Wonderful, Uncle Mort. Wonderful. I needed food. That's all. I needed food. <laughs> something, Unc. I think Paris has been cheating on the last two holes. Cheating? Oh, no, my boy. He wouldn't do a thing like that. Still, he's a cornet player. <laughs> yeah, I know for a fact he forgot to count a couple of his shots. He did? Why, that's terrible. Hurry up, Fatso. So let's get this over with. All right, all right. Go ahead. It's your shot. Uh, give me that club. <laughs> ah, there. Right smack on the green. Pop that butterball. Yeah, butterball. Now, now don't let him get you going, Unc. Here's your club. Yeah, all right, my boy. Here goes. Look out! <laughs> now, see here, you deliberately did that to make me miss. I did not. I was talking to my caddy. If you weren't such a little fellow, I'd knock the suffings out of you. I mean, if you weren't such a big fellow. <laughs> Quit squawking. Let's get going. Uh, move over, Leroy. Okay, Unc. Don't worry. I know a way to fix him. What's that? It, never mind. Let me shoot first. Uh, Gosh, Hunk, you're only six inches from the pin. Yeah, come on, Leroy, Marjorie, we'll win this thing yet. Yeah, what were you saying, Leroy? If he's going to cheat, we can take care of him. Oh, no, nothing unsporting, my boy. Can't have anything like that. Are you sure it'll work? <laughs> Don't 
you worry, Uncle Mort. Just leave it to me. Yeah. Well, Pop. Looks like you'll be home in five, but if I make this putt, I'm down in three and the match is over. Yeah, I can't deny it, Ferris. It's only a six-foot putt. Uh, Want to concede it? Concede? Frockmorton P. Gildersleeve concede? Never. There's a principal involved. What principal, Long? Fifty bucks. <laughs> That's the spirit, Uncle Mort. Well, have it your way, kids. The cup means nothing to me, but oh, that cash. <laughs> Hand me my putter, son. Do it now, Leroy. Now. Okay. Yeah. Hey, hey, quiet. I told you I can't stand that song. Quiet. The boy is just musically inclined. <laughs> Go right ahead and putt. Uh, darn kid. Nope. <laughs> All right, I missed it. But if I sink this one, I still win. Oh, yes, I can still lose. Go ahead. I don't want to walk with a house. Listen, I told you I don't like that song. Now cut it out. Sink the putt, sink the putt. Okay. Uh, Say, Ferris, if you miss once more, maybe I'll win. Don't huh? worry. Watch this one. Yeah. That's no fair! I didn't make a sound. No, but I thought you were going to. <laughs> Say, if I make this putt, I win, don't I? You quiet now. You victory. Oh, <laughs> By golly, Throckmorton, I'm glad you won. It was worth two dollars to see you beat that stuck-up trumpet player. Horace, you're a pal. Come on, let's get up there to that 19th hole, huh? I, I don't, don't want to golf without you. No, no sir. How do you like my trophy, Bertie? My, it sure looks handsome up there, Mr. Gillsleeve. Just what the mantle needed. But I thought they were going to give you a cup. Well, none of the clubs are giving cups anymore, Bertie. The government needs the medal for scrap. But this is a very valuable Ming vase. It's gorgeous, all right. Yeah, you should have seen how I want it, Bertie. I was lying about 50 feet from the hole, you see? Yeah. <laughs> Here, give me that club. All right. Yeah, thank you. I'll show you. I took my trusty number five iron. I swung it easy like this. Oh, good night, everybody. <laughs> Original music heard on this program was composed and conducted by Billy Mills. This is Frank Bingman speaking for the makers of Tapset and inviting you to tune in again next week at the same time for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Have you discovered the speedy way to make swell macaroni and cheese? These days, clever women make that favorite dish without any fuss of grating cheese, without any bother with blanching and baking the macaroni. They simply open up a package of the product called Kraft Dinner. They cook the special Kraft Dinner macaroni quickly in boiling water, and with the Kraft grated, which also comes in each Kraft Dinner package, they sprinkle the cheese flavor through and through. Presto, the dinner main dish is ready in only seven minutes cooking time. But the best part of it is, Kraft Dinner macaroni and cheese is extra special good. Fluffy, light, and drenched in cheese flavor. When good cooks discover this seven-minute way of making macaroni and cheese, they say never again to the old-fashioned slow method. And Kraft Dinner is a money saver as well as a time saver. So tomorrow when you're shopping, get ready for quick, tempting main dishes of macaroni and cheese. Ask your dealer for Kraft Dinner. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company. That presents the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> the makers.
Adventures of Fab's Death, present each week at this time, Harold Perry as The Great Gildersleeve, written by John Wheaton. We'll hear from The Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. Homemakers, when unexpected guests stay for dinner or between meal refreshments are in order, are you equal to the occasion? Well, whether the occasion calls for just a snack or for the main dish of a hearty meal, you'll find Pabstet is mighty handy to have around. You see, Pabstet is the delicious golden cheese food of a hundred different uses. Pabstet slices so neatly and spreads so easily, it's grand for sandwiches or appetizers, or to serve with fruit. Pabstet makes luscious, smooth cheese sauces that turn vegetables, leftovers, or chicken or egg dishes into real party treats. Pabstet is just right for cheese omelets, rabbits, or souffles. Yes, and Pabstet is nourishing. It's a fine energy food and easy to digest. So always keep a package or two of Pabstet on hand. Whether your dealer has it in the convenient round, flat package. Remember, just ask for Pabstet. P-A-B-S-T dash E-T-T. Pabstet, the delicious golden cheese food of a hundred uses. Let's join our friend, the great Gildersleeve, who has risen this morning with the conviction that all's right with the world. After a warm shower, a half dozen knee bends, a brisk shave, and a hearty breakfast, he stepped out onto the front porch to enjoy a cigar and survey his property. Uh-huh, October. I tell you, Marjorie, there's no finer month in the year. Just breathe that air. It's wonderful. Uh, feel that nip in it. Makes you want to get out and do things. Doesn't it, Leroy? Such as what? <laughs> October. Harvest time. Frost on the pumpkin. Brown October ale. The smell of burning leaves. I love October. Uh, look at that maple tree in Mrs. Ransom's yard there. Like a beautiful painting. Uncle Mort, I believe you'd like any kind of a tree if Mrs. Ransom was sitting under it. She is? Where? <laughs> <laughs> I was speaking figuratively. Oh. Well, let me reiterate, Marjorie, that Mrs. Ransom to me is nothing but a neighbor. You believe in the good neighbor policy. If we were discussing trees, look at our own lovely elm. Look at the color of those leaves. Oh, it's glorious. Yeah, and you know what's going to happen to those leaves? They're going to fall on the ground. That's the first law of nature, my boy. Yeah, and I'm going to have to rake them up. That's the second law. <laughs> Leroy, never let me hear you say that about a tree. Okay, I think I'll go over to Piggy. Did you ever stop to consider what a wonderful thing a tree is? Leroy, I asked you a question. Did you? No, Uncle, but I'll do it the minute I get back. <laughs> Come back here. You do what? What you said. You weren't listening. I'm listening, Uncle. It's Piggy's waiting for me. We're going to dig a fort. You dig a fort? You can do plenty of digging right here, Leroy. Just stick around. I have something to tell you. Uh, both of you. Uh-oh. What is it? Well, I bought a tree. Huh? You bought a tree? Certainly. What's so amazing about that? Everybody ought to have more trees. Why, one of the happiest recollections of my childhood is an old cherry tree we had in our front yard at home. I fell out of it once and broke my arm. <laughs> you must have had a jolly childhood, Uncle Moore. Yeah. What wouldn't I give to be back there now? <laughs> to be a kid again. And break the other arm. <laughs> Yes, sir. There are two things every boy ought to grow up with. A dog of his own and a cherry tree. Do you mean that, Uncle? What? About the dog? Uh, no, but I mean it about the cherry tree. <laughs> the tree I bought was a cherry tree. How did you come to get sold this tree, Uncle Moore? I didn't get sold it. I bought it of my own free will, fully dressed and in my right mind. <laughs> well, where are we going to put it? Where are we going to put another tree here? Well, uh, uh, you don't understand, my dear. This is a very fine tree. It's a... It, they call it a giant ponderosa. Holy smokes, how big is it? Well, the man says they grow 30 or 40 feet high, higher than the house. What man, Uncle Moore? It, the man that sold it to me. He showed me a picture of it. Oh, you haven't seen the tree? Why, of course not. I hope you didn't pay him for it. Well, I, uh... Come on, Uncle. How much did he stick you for? Twenty two fifty, and he didn't stick me. Twenty two fifty? Wow, you must have bought a redwood. Uncle Moore, did you ever stop to think how many cherries you could buy for twenty two fifty? Oh, you're very helpful, both of you. But the tree will be arriving today or tomorrow. We've got to decide where we're going to put it. Now, I thought maybe right out here in the front. Now, Lord, this is the only 
there's sunny spot left in the whole yard. Well, that's good. Cherry trees need sun. It'll give us some nice shade out here. We can hang a hammock under it. Hey, that wouldn't be bad. Just lie here with your mouth open and let the cherries drop in, uh, boy. <laughs> well, of course, we might not have more than a few cherries the first year, but after that... Oh, uh, Bertie. Yes, sir? How are you on cherry pies? Well, I haven't had any complaints so far. Oh, uh, then warm up your rolling pin. Uh, Leroy, do you like cherry pie? Are you kidding? Then get the shovel. Oh, I like coconut custard better. Get the shovel anyway. <laughs> Enough. Well, you've hardly scratched the surface there, Leroy. That isn't deep enough for a geranium. Gosh, I've been digging for half an hour. Here, give me that shovel, Leroy. I'll spell you. Yes, you show him how it should be done, Bertie. You've got to put your foot on it and give it to old heave hole. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Bertie. Heave hole. <laughs> Fine. I'm going to have to stop pretty soon, Mr. Gilfleet, and get lunch. Is anybody hungry? I'm not. Well, don't you think it's deep enough now, Uncle Moore? It's up to our way. Well, you've got to remember, my dear, this is no two for a nickel cherry tree. This is a giant ponderosa. Yes, I know, Uncle Moore. These things have roots. They've got to spread out. Eve ho, Bertie. Looks like I'm dug in for the women here. <laughs> Eve ho! <laughs> Yes, Leroy. While you're resting, give Bertie a hand there. I, I don't want to suggest anything, Unc, but how are you with a shovel? Uh, I'm saving myself, Leroy. So I know that. Uh, I'm saving myself for the hard work. We've got a long way to go yet. These giant ponderosas, you know. Heave ho, my boy. But it's up to my chin, Unc. Chin up, my boy. Heave ho. <laughs> Yes, Bertie. It's getting dark down here. <laughs> we don't think maybe we can go on far enough. Uh, you're getting there, Bertie. You're getting there. We stuck a pipe or something down here, huh? Mother Moore. Uh, wait a minute, Leroy. Uh, what is it, Marjorie? The trade office calls. The tree's there, and they're sending it out. Oh, fine. Well, we'll have to get busy here and have everything ready. Hey, come on up, Bertie. Yes, sir, if I can get up. Uh, uh, look out, you're starting a landslide. Uh, Leroy, give her a boost there. Grab hold of the shovel, Bertie, and I'll pull. Oh, oh. Oh. Great day in the morning. I sure am glad to be out that hole in the ground. Now give me a hand, up. Okay. One, two, three. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. There you are. Thanks, Uncle. Now, Leroy, while you're resting, I want you to take that shovel. Well, here comes Mrs. Ransom. Mrs. Ransom? Oh, give me the shovel. <laughs> Break down and go to work, Uncle. Go dig your fort, Leroy. <laughs> Give me the shovel. Uh, good afternoon, Mrs. Ransom. Uh, lovely day. Just glorious. Hello, Leroy. Hi, Mrs. Ransom. Marjorie, honey, you're looking just sweet. Thank you. Uh, just doing a little landscaping here. I saw you. I saw you out the window, and I declared to goodness I was just consumed with curiosity, so I came right over willy nilly. Well, glad you did. Where's Willie? Oh. Uh, <laughs> Careful, don't fall in that hole. Oh, what rock, Mountain? Mr. Gildersleeve, did you go and dig that great big hole? Uh, well, I had a little help. A little, he says. <laughs> well, it's a lovely hole. But what are you going to do with it? Make a swimming pool? Uh, no, we're going to plant a tree. A tree? Oh, Shark Mountain, then you did remember. It should remember what? Well, what we talked about under the maple tree the other night. Oh, that. <laughs> <laughs> I love trees. Don't you, Marjorie? Yes, you can't go wrong with a tree. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Shark Mountain, the boys back home used to have the prettiest custom. They used to carve the girls' initials in the trees. Sometimes they even put a heart around them with an arrow through it. Silly, isn't it? 
<laughs> Leroy, go dig your fort. I'm getting to like it here, huh? Hey, I'm missing somebody else. Looks like Mr. Peavy. It is. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, uh, hello, Peavy. Hmm, doing a little digging, I see. Yes, doing a little digging. Hmm, that's nice. <laughs> I do a little gardening myself when I can. Uh, Peavy, uh, you know Mrs. Ransom? Oh, yes. Yes, Mr. Peavy and I are old friends. Yes, I had the privilege of selling Mrs. Ransom a back brush a few days ago. Uh, how's it working out, Mrs. Ransom? Well, I, I hardly know that this is the place to discuss it, Mr. Peavy, but it has a tendency to tickle. Well, they come that way from the factory. You have to work them in. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Peavy and I have one of those brushes. We've had it almost ten years, and we think the world of it. We wouldn't part with that brush for almost anything you could name. Uh, well, I'm glad you're happy with it. Hey, Unc, here comes the old goat. Leroy, that's no way to talk about Judge Hooker. Hello, Gildy. Hello, you old goat. <laughs> Mrs. Ransom. Oh, my, this is an unexpected pleasure, Judge. Hello, Leroy, Marjorie, Hello. Phoebe. Uh, Quite a little gathering. What's going on here? Mr. Gildersleeve is having a tree planted. Well, what is this, Arbor Day? Oh, I wish I could stay for the ceremonies, but I've got to tend to my marketing. Oh, must you go? Yes, but when I come back, I expect to see a shady bell right where that hole is. Goodbye now. Uh, goodbye, Mrs. Ransom. Goodbye, goodbye. Mrs. Ransom. Goodbye. Goodbye, <laughs> goodbye Mrs. Ransom. You can have the shovel back now, Leroy. <laughs> What's the excavation for, Gildy? Are you going to plant this tree or bury it? No. <laughs> what kind of a tree is it? It's a cherry tree. Any objections? No. Of course, they don't live very long, but they'll probably live as long as you will. <laughs> Listen to me, you old goat. A cherry tree was good enough for George Washington, and George Washington was good enough for me. You tell him, Uncle. Why, every house in this country ought to have a cherry tree. I hope this tree will be an inspiration to you, Leroy, to follow in the footsteps of George Washington. Do you understand what's expected of you? Yeah, you want me to chop it down. You know. <laughs> smart kid. He knows his history, Gildy. That's more than you do. Uh, yeah. Hey, Uncle, uh, here he comes. Uh, who? The express man. Maybe he's got the tree. Oh, no, no. It would take a bigger wagon than that, Leroy. You'll have to send it out on a truck. All right, up here, though. Oh, he's stopping here. Well, maybe it's still down at the freight office. Maybe they couldn't handle it. After all, a giant Ponderosa at twenty-two fifty. Mr. Gildersleeve, gentleman right there. Yeah, something for me? A sign here. Wait a minute. I was expecting a tree. They telephoned me from the freight office. Do you know anything about it? A sign here. But what am I signing for? I bought this tree from a fellow who came through here a week ago. Sign here, please. Oh, all right, I'll sign. But what about the tree? I paid a lot of good money down. If it's all the same to you, I'd like to know no, what... Oh, no, no. Now you went and signed in the wrong place. I'll have to erase it. Just erase it. Well, you got me so darn excited. Now, listen, brother. Would you mind telling bottom me... Bottom line there. The bottom line. Your oh. hand's shaking, huh? Yeah. Now, would you mind telling me what you're delivering, if anything? Tree. The tree? Where is it? Under my arm. Take it, will you, bud? That little twig? <laughs> <laughs> oh, isn't this awful? <laughs> Gildersleeve will be with us again in a few seconds. But first, you homemakers have a big job to do these wartime days. Yes, your job is to see that your families get the foods that help make them strong. So you'll want to know about a food that adds extra nourishment to meals in any number of easy, appetizing ways. That food is Pabstet, the delicious golden cheese food of a hundred different uses. Yes, Pabstet offers many quick, delightful ways to add variety and extra nutriments to your menus. One way is with the smooth, rich cheese sauces that Pabstet makes. Just melt Pabstet in a double boiler, stir in a little milk and season, and you have a grand golden cheese sauce for vegetables, leftovers, all kinds of nourishing food. Pabstet cheese sauce is mighty tasty, mighty nutritious, too, because Pabstet is a nourishing, digestible energy food, rich in milk protein. And it helps provide vitamin A and the important milk minerals, calcium and phosphorus. So serve Pabstet often. Remember, it's Pabstet, the delicious golden cheese food of a hundred uses. Now, 
let's get back to the great Gildersleeve and his cherry tree. The neighbors have left, and for half an hour, Gildersleeve and his nephew have been filling in the mighty hole they just finished digging. Alas, poor Leroy, I knew him well. Never mind the ham, Leroy. Keep shuffling. First we shovel it out, and then we shovel it in. Yeah, that's life, my boy. It seems a shame to fill up a ditch like this, huh? Would have made a swell elephant trap. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to trap the fellow who sold me this tree. If that Johnny Appleseed ever comes through here again, I'll hang him from the top of it. You couldn't hang a midget from it now. Yeah. All right, keep shoveling. You know what, boy? I think this tree's going to live. Oh, really, Marjorie? Mm-hmm. I've been soaking its little roots in water. Oh. Look, there's some green there. By George, you're right. Look at that green. Water, that's all it needs. Let's get it in the ground quick, huh? Leroy, scoop out a little bed for it. Okay. Yeah. A young tree will stand transplanting better than the big one, you know. Yeah, that's right, my dear. Uh, stick it in the hole, Marjorie, and Leroy, you fill around it. Hold it straight, Marge. There. Uh, you know, all that digging we did will probably help us. Plenty of cultivation, that's what these trees need, and plenty of water. And I'll pat the earth around the little roots, Leroy. That's right. Don't pat it too hard. These giant ponderosas are very delicate. <laughs> you got to cultivate them and water them. You got to tend them like a little baby. Hmm. Nice in a tree. <laughs> Maybe we ought to take it in the house nights to keep it warm. <laughs> very funny, Leroy. Go get the hose and drag it over here, will you? We've got to give this a good soaking. Don't you think we ought to use a medicine dropper? A medicine. <laughs> Go get the hose. Okay, okay. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, they just like to kid you, Uncle Mort. You are funny, you know. Oh, you too. <laughs> Let them laugh. We're lucky to get a tree like this for twenty-two fifty. Hey, the hose! It, well, drag it over here. I can't. It won't reach. This is as far as it will go. Oh, well, turn on the water. We'll squirt it from there. Here, give it to me. You go turn it off. Don't squirt it too hard, Uncle Moore. You'll knock the tree over. Go ahead. Turn it on, Leroy. It's on! Stand back, Marjorie. Here oh. it comes. Uh-huh. Turn it on all the way. I've got to turn it on as far as you go. Oh, look at that. Is that guy next door taking a bath again? <laughs> Look at that dribble. Oh, you can make it go farther than that. Stick your thumb over the end of it, Unc. Well, I'll try it. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Leroy, you knew it would do that. You didn't have to squirt yourself in the face with it, Unc. I'll wipe you off, Uncle Moore. Yes, never mind. By George, that's the last straw. That's Summerfield for you. You try to plant a tree, you try to beautify the place for a little, and then what happens? No water. Well, Bertie's been complaining about the pressure all summer. Well, she should. The water situation in this town is a disgrace. It's a fire hazard. It's a menace to the public health. And uh, it leaves a ring in the bathtub, too. <laughs> I'm going to go out and do something. Come on, Hooker, open up. I know you're in there. All right, Gillersleeve, what do you want? I'm very busy. Hey, Judge, have you used any water lately? I never touch the sun. You come all the way down here to ask me riddles? I mean it. I'm serious. We can't get any water at my house. We can't get any pressure. It's a disgrace. Well, don't complain to me. Complain to Clanahan. He's the water commissioner. Uh, what's the use of complaining to Clanahan? He just sits down there at the waterworks on his fat salary playing pinochle. <laughs> <laughs> While the town goes dry. A man can't even plant a cherry tree. Well, don't holler at me. I don't play pinochle. That's nothing to do with it. You might at least ask a visitor to come in and sit down, Hooker. I don't want you to come in, and I don't want you to sit down. I'm busy. Now, Judge, look, I've written a letter to the indicator of indicator about this situation. You have. Uh, and I'd like to read it to you. No, 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 no. I'm positive it's a fine letter, Gildy, and you must be sure to send it to the newspaper. But if you want to get action with a politician like Clanahan, you'll have to get out and blast. It blast? What do you mean, Judge? You want to get up a petition. Go around and get people to sign it. A petition? You're right. In the voice of the people... Oh, that's wonderful, Judge. I'll get up a petition that'll blow his ears back. I'll write a petition that'll go down in history with the Missouri Compromise. Or was it the Mississippi? Ah, good morning, Floyd. Morning, 
Mr. Gildersleeve, you're next. Be with you in about two minutes. Thanks, Floyd. I won't require your professional administrations this morning. I shaved myself. But I've got a little thing here I'd like to have you sign. Well, the wife says I'll sign anything. What is it? Uh, you use a lot of water here, don't you, Floyd? Now, I've got a petition. I'll read it to you. A quote. It's to whom it may concern. We, the undersigned taxpayers of Summerfield, believing that the water situation in this town is a crime and a disgrace, X-ray, X-ray. and a stench in the nostrils of civic pride, do hereby petition the town council. Hey, hey, What's hissing? Uh, are you shushing me? The guy in the chair under the towel. This Sorry. Are you working on me, Ranger? Uh, uh, yes, sir. Be right with you. Why get this towel off me, please? Yes, sir. Oh, hello, Clanahan. <laughs> hello, Gildersleeve. I read your letter in the indicator last night. Did you? I used your water to shave with this morning. I'm just getting up a little testimonial about it here. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Gildersleeve, but I couldn't possibly sign a thing like that. Mr. Clanahan here is one of my best customers. I'm sorry. Come back later. <laughs> <laughs> well, if that's the way you feel about it. Goodbye, Floyd. I'll be seeing you, Mr. Clanahan, if you're around. (laughs) But, Peavy, you know yourself the water in this town isn't any good. It's not even fit to bathe in. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. (laughs) I bathe in it regularly, so does Mrs. Peavy. All right, it's fine to bathe in, then. Well, no, I wouldn't say that either. It's a little slow coming out of the tap, and it's kind of brown, and it has its peculiar taste. Well, in in other words, it's pretty bad water. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. (laughs) Look, Peavy, I'm not asking you to sign the Magna Carta. It's just a little piece of paper asking for water. I understand. Peavy, out in my yard, I've got a cherry tree. A little tiny cherry tree, pushing its tender shoots up through the parched earth, crying for water. Are you going to deny that little tree lit life? Yeah. Sign here. <laughs> oh, no, Gildy, I wasn't born yesterday. Look here, Judge, you're the one who told me to get up this petition. Sure I was, but I'm not crazy enough to sign it. Why, I'd as soon sign my own death warrant. I'll be bringing that around yet, you old goat. <laughs> a fine, upstanding judge. Well, you know how this town is run, Gildy. It's just too bad. I'd like to see somebody throw Clanahan out. <laughs> somebody else, not me. Uh, that's your final word, is it, Hooker? I'm sorry, Gildy, but that's it. Very interesting. This is going to be very interesting. To whom? To a certain lady who shall be nameless, Mrs. Ransom. All right. If you're going to play dirty, give me the paper. Uh, I thought you'd see the light, Judge. You're worse than Clanahan. I'm doing this against my better judgment, you understand. You never want to trust that anyway. Thanks, Judge. <laughs> Come in, won't you? Come right in. Uh, now, don't tell me you've gone and brought me something again. Well, not exactly. I brought you a little paper to sign. Oh, my goodness. I do hope it's nothing legal. Well, it's, uh, it has to do with the water situation. Oh, dear. Is it bad? It, hadn't you noticed? It, it's terrible. There's no hydraulic pressure. Oh, there you go. I just don't know what you're talking about when you talk about things like that. I'm not a bit mechanical, you know. Oh, well, you don't have to understand it, really. All you have to do is sign it. It's a petition. Petition? Is that anything like a subpoena? Uh, Well, not really, no. Because I never did know what a subpoena was. My my husband, Beauregard, was a lawyer, you know, and I never did understand him from the day I married him. Oh, but then he never understood me. Oh. But we understand each other, don't we, Strachmartin? Dear old brother. <laughs> Come into the parlor, won't you? Now, let's don't talk about petitions and pressures and chemistry and all that. Let's talk about us. Oh, well, I'll tell you. I've got to get this petition in before the meeting of the town council tomorrow. Oh, pooh. All you men think about is business. I know, but uh, let's get a sign first, and then we can... Uh, uh, go on from there. <laughs> well, I'd love to sign 
sign at Throckmorton? Really, I would. But Beauregard told me I must never sign anything without getting the advice of a lawyer first. Oh. Uh, don't you reckon maybe I ought to consult Judge Hooker? Uh, Hooker? <laughs> no. Frankly, I don't think the judge would understand about this. You don't? No. You see, if this petition, uh, it, well, it all started with that tree I planted. Our tree, Leela. Our little tree. <laughs> oh, truck, Martin. You're sweet. I'll sign it. I'll do anything you say. Uh, wait. Here's my pen. <laughs> After all, you're my air raid warden. I guess that makes it legal, doesn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. There. To Rock Martin with love from Leela. Uh, huh? <laughs> Aren't you pleased? Well, uh, I mean, it's all right the way I autographed it. Oh, the town council will love it. <laughs> <laughs> With love from Leela. <laughs> What's that noise? What time is it? If only six o'clock. What's going on out there? Hey, up, wake up. Leroy, what's that racket outside? There's a gang of men digging in the front yard. In the front yard? Who told them to do that? Six o'clock in the morning. I'll find out about this. Hey! Hey, out there! Oh, it's you, Clanahan. What do you think you're doing? You complained about the water, didn't you? Certainly I did, and I'm going to complain about it again. You said you wanted action, didn't you? Certainly I did. Well, you're getting it. Wait a minute. Where's that tree that was there? What tree? Oh! <laughs> No, Leroy. Uh, what's the picture? Oh, it's super, Unc. It's called Here We Go Again. Here We Go Again? I never heard of it. You never heard of Here We Go Again? Well, I've heard of it now. It's got Fibber McGee and Molly in it. Oh, my little chums. Well. And Edgar Berger and Charlie McCarthy. Well, for heaven's sake, that sounds great. Here's a dollar. Take your friend. Wait a minute. There's a guy in it called the Great Gildersleeve. Never heard. Oh, that's me. What am I saying? Wait a minute, Leroy. I'll get my hat and go with you. Good night, everybody. Here we go again. <laughs> music heard on this program was composed and conducted by Billy Mills. This is Frank Bingman speaking for the makers of Tab Set and inviting you to be with us again next week at the same time for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. A word for all you thrifty women who are trying to keep the food budget on an even keel. The product called Kraft Dinner is just your dish. For Kraft Dinner gives you the economical way, the quick way to make delicious macaroni and cheese. Fluffy, tender macaroni, drenched with cheese goodness. With Kraft Dinner, you make it in just seven minutes cooking time. You see, every Kraft Dinner package contains a special fast-cooking macaroni and an envelope of Kraft grated so you can sprinkle in the cheese flavor in a hurry. And say, the family will go for this thrifty, speedy macaroni and cheese. They'll tell you it's as good as any you ever baked in the oven the old-fashioned way. Why don't you get several packages of economical Kraft Dinner tomorrow? Have it on hand in the pantry shelf. A main dish ready in seven minutes is such a help these busy days. Tomorrow, ask your food dealer for Kraft Dinner. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company.